I'd like to thank you all for inviting me here today to speak with you. I would propose that I speak for 20 minutes or so and then perhaps we can establish a dialogue. I'll be happy to uh, try to answer any questions that you may have. First of all, I'd like to thank Dr. Habib for a marvelous introduction. You make me sound a lot better than I really am. <laughs> so I hope I don't, I hope I uh, do your introduction at least some justice. Yeah, I was just thinking as I was listening to, um, to the preliminary um, remarks, and if I'm not mistaken, India has to have the largest Urdu-speaking population of any country in the world. Is that correct? More than Pakistan? And in fact, Hyderabad has to be the center of gravity for the Urdu language in the world today. So it's really appropriate that your university is located here and that you all take on the role of preserving this wonderful language and its unique culture for the rest of us. I think um, people in the United States are just now starting to appreciate the influence of India, of the Urdu language, and all the other cultural facets of this great nation to Western civilization and to the United States in general. India is now in a very unique position in the United States. Thirty years ago it was China. You know, China was coming out of the Cultural Revolution. America was charmed by all things Chinese after Richard Nixon's historic visits. And of course, Chinese food, Chinese clothing, Chinese fashion, they all became the rage in the United States. That romance lasted for a couple of decades. Now, if you look at the latest, the results of the latest Acad Academy Awards with uh, Slumdog Millionaire winning the best movie um, with all the other awards, particularly uh, Raman's rewards, awards for, uh, for the music in that film, India's, I think, supplanted China as the new nation to be admired and to be studied um, in the United States. So it's very appropriate, I think, that, um, that in acknowledgment thereof, the United States government is expanding its mission in India, and I think it's fortunate for me, because I like Hyderabad very much, that Hyderabad, the center of um, Urdu study in the world, was chosen for the location for you know, this expansion of um, relations. You've probably all heard the, the cliche, you know, the, the world's oldest democracy. I don't think we really are. I think the Swiss have us beat probably by a couple hundred years. And of course, the world's largest democracy. India, if we're not the oldest, India still remains the largest. So at least half of that equation is true. Um, but in any event, I think it's, it's very important that the relationship between India and the United States has, over the last several decades, warmed, particularly in terms of the official relationship. I was here in India 30 years ago, and I think at that time the people-to-people -people relationship was as warm as it is now, but certainly at that time the official relationship, primarily because the world was you know, aligned into two axes, the official relationship certainly wasn't what it is today. And I think we can thank Bill Clinton and George W. Bush for establishing the foundation of what promises to be a warm and friendly relationship between our governments that matches the warmth and ardor of the relationship between our two peoples. And I th so I think we're we're really at the, um, how should I say it, we're building the foundation, I think, for a new relationship, not only between our two countries, but with India representing such a large segment of the world's population, hopefully a new way of, a multipolar way of aligning the globe and working together to address problems that we all share and face together. Trade is on the increase with India. Um, 
you know, travel is on the increase with India. Um, there are so many other new initiatives that are taking place. And these, in turn, will, I think, help strengthen the ties that, that we have on the political and cultural and friendship front. Um, we have new agreements in train for energy, aviation, space, um, and other things. As you know, global warming is something that we're all facing, pollution in general. And I think the, the kinds of cooperation that we're establishing between in India and the United States, the knowledge that our two countries will bring to bear on these problems will not only serve us respectively well, but the world's population in general. Um, uh, last week I had the pleasure of visiting a plant that produces solar energy panels here in India. And of course I was amazed to see you know, how efficiently these could be produced here and in fact how they were being made here and shipped to Austria, Germany, the United States and other countries to be used to generate pollution free energy, renewable energy in these countries. And of course again this is yet another example of how how the cooperation between our two cultures, our two countries, produces good effects for both of us. Obviously the technology was developed jointly, oftentimes by Indian scientists working together with American scientists in the United States or European scientists in Europe. The production is done here and of course the results and the benefits are global. Which brings up, I think, one of the reasons that, um, that Hyderabad was chosen as the site for this new consulate general. At this point, I think people from Gujarat still outnumber people from Andhra Pradesh in the United States. However, that gap is closing. And the really significant fact about this is, although the Gujaratis came and were small-scale entrepreneurs. You find them basically in such commercial enterprises as the hospitality or hotel sector, motel sector, convenience stores, etc. The people from Andhra Pradesh went to the United States basically for higher education. Many of them stayed and they brought to bear not only their knowledge but their entrepreneurial skills in the United States and helped fuel for example, our internet revolution, our IT revolution. At the same time, our medical uh, care is much enriched because of um, the participation of scientists and doctors, nurses from Andhra Pradesh who went to study, many of whom went, many of whom remain in the states to serve. Engineers, the engineering sector is um, is enriched by people from Andhra Pradesh who who set the standards now at our engineering school and then if we're lucky stay in the United States a little longer to help us develop our various uh, high-tech sectors. So I think Andhra Pradesh is playing a very significant role in terms of the relationship between our two countries and in terms of developing our economy. And of course it's not just one way because many of the people that I meet here were in the United States. Um, many of the people and many of your neighbors here in Gachaboli, they worked in the United States, they studied in the United States. After 10 years, 20 years, they came back bringing these skills back to Hyderabad. And in fact, um, that's why Hyderabad is probably the most dynamic city in India today. As, um, as Ambassador Mulford was quoted, it truly is a working city. We now have in India the second largest cultural, or pardon me, the second largest consular operation in the world. Um, our largest being with Mexico. And of course Mexico makes sense because they're immediately next door to us. And Mexicans uh, require visas and travel back and forth uh, in large numbers. But I think it's, it's quite unique that the second largest operation should be not next door but indeed on the other side of the globe 
and yet there's a lot of people traveling back and forth from here as well and probably much to our betterment um, we have now 93,000 students in India I think soon a, a, a 93,000 students from India in the United States soon to approach one lakh um, India has has op has outpaced the Chinese um, by quite a bit over the last several years um, ma many of these in fact I see here it's uh, pardon me it's it's 94,000 uh, students not 93 I'm quoting the old numbers here um, we have a Indian community of 2.5 million in the United States um, Indians are Americans of Indian ex uh, extraction and many of them of course have become very famous in the United States whether it be in politics such as um, Bobby Jindal or whether it's in scholarship such as uh, CM Nime or in entertainment such as uh, Manoj uh, Knight Somalian or in um, punditry such as Fareed Zakaria I think that the that the impact of our Indian community is really starting to be felt in the United States and of course that's contributed to this new glow in the relationship and the fact that India now is I think more culturally prominent in the United States than any other country um, I th you know if you look at the problems the world faces today pardon me for the microphone I guess I don't know if it's me or the microphone but many of the pro you know problems used to be national problems they were national issues now the problems we face are all international issues it doesn't if you look at climate control it doesn't it it you'll have the same effect addressing the the problem with uh, emissions in China or India as you will in the United States and ultimately the effects of these the good effects you can bring about are felt equally by all and the bad effects if you don't address these problems are felt equally by all I think it's much to India's credit that it recognizes a lot of these problems as being global and that in turn it's willing to cooperate with us and other nations to address these problems in a global forum to the betterment of all so and the part of the equation I think that really matters is as I've alluded to before the fact that there's a great deal of scientific engineering and other technological talent here that's going to help create the solutions to address the problems that we all face together I also am very pleased that this university is not only a center for Urdu studies but also for a, fo a focus on women's education the Chinese have a saying and that that is women uphold half the sky and I think you know in the United States we learned and we're, st we're still in the process of bringing about equal rights for um, all of our people but the fact is we've learned that economically bringing women to the workplace makes good sense because if you don't you lose half the talent of your population it's squandered and wasted and I think you all realize that here as well that if you don't tap into the popu tap into the talent that women can bring to bear on social techni technical and other problems that you face that indeed it's like having one arm tied behind your back you're, you're just not as effective in addressing problems and issues so I'm also very pleased to be here in recognition of that part of your role I think I've probably talked enough what I would propose at this point is that maybe I open up the floor to questions and see if um, I can humbly provide some answers or uh, at least shed a little light on the issues okay